also been a founding member and a trustee for Hazelnut Community Farm. And you might have figured out that I'm married to the founder of <laughs> Hazelnut Community Farm, John White. So it's great to be here with you. Um, room mm -hmm. two has had two brilliant workshops already. So hopefully this will also be really helpful to you in how we integrate uh, creation care into church life. I'm just going to start sharing a presentation, so bear with me. Is that working? Let's see if we can get it working. Chrome tab. Here we go. Muted. Can't hear you. Muted. Can't hear you. Is to be muting me, which is unfortunate. I might have to go ahead out my presentation. Um, it seems to be muting me whenever I try to switch screens. So bear with. Um, I'll see if we can make it work. What I wanted to do is to start this session off with a prayer, actually, from one of the resources I really want to focus on today, Laudato Si. Um, probably a lot of you here have already heard of this, probably may well have read it or read parts of it, but um, it's such an excellent resource for thinking about um, creation care in our churches and kind of giving the broad theological brushstrokes and also going on in the world. And he does a great job of integrating those things together and providing, I think, some hopeful avenues for us, hopeful ways forward. So let me start with a prayer. All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all the Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O oh God, the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature. As we journey towards your infinite light, we thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, for love, and for peace. I feel like that's a pretty useful prayer that we could helpfully pray every day, um, but that's from Laudato C. The first thing I want to talk about in um, helping our churches integrate creation care to every aspect of church life is the Eco Church Award from Arosha. Many of you will have already heard of that. And perhaps if you can indicate by a thumbs up or something, that would be really helpful for me to judge how many people um, are already really familiar with Eco Church. Lots of people are. That's it. Well, I won't labour on this too long, but um, for those who maybe haven't um, started with Eco Church yet, or for maybe struggling with it in your church, um, some of the things that we found helpful with this process and project is 
to appoint eco champions, not just one eco champion, but to really try and spread it out across the church and to try and get people to own each area. So eco church works on the basis of five different surveys, looking at your building, looking at your worshipping life, looking at how you're caring for your land, how you are, um, how your personal lifestyles are and how you are connected globally and locally around eco issues. So it's got five areas. And what uh, we found worked quite well with us was to really spread that out. So to appoint um, or get volunteers to, to kind of hold each area. Um, so we ended up with about 10 eco champions in our benefits. They're not huge um, churches, but by doing that, you get a lot more people to own what's going on. It's not just something that's kind of being done to them. They become part of the process of how do we change how we pray together? How do we change what we're doing with our churchyard? How do we change um, the way we kind of close our doors, look after our light switches and our heating bills? Um, how do we look to change the way we're doing church so that creation care becomes centralized in all aspects of our life together? So we found um, we found that a breadth of uh, a breadth of eco champions was really helpful for that. The other thing that is really helpful is to get your PCC on board. Um, I'm just checking in the chat. Do put questions in um, as we go through. This is supposed to be a really uh, practical session. Um, so what was I saying? I was saying, um, yeah, get your PCC on board. I think regular get this as a standing item on your PCC agenda if you can, if every time that you're gathering those who are leading and holding the church and you're having to think about how are we doing on our eco focus, um, that really helps keep it front and center. And the other thing I'd say about eco church is that it's, um, it's a good way to get going. Um, it is, um, what's the word it's a survey so it's asking you questions which will hopefully prompt action and change and development um, some of the things that that we got underway and were exciting to see the eco champions kind of run with as ideas were things like toilet twinning we did that through selling um, who gives a crap loo roll at a bit of a profit per roll and um, all very appropriate and linked so it had a nice theme to it and managed to raise enough money for a toilet block and showers and um, in both churches. So that was a great and easy way to get lots of people involved. Um, other things that we did was we put together a vegan cookbook. So we got people to submit their vegan recipes that actually worked. Um, lots of vegan recipes look great, but not, might not actually work. So we encourage people to submit those. We've done things like uh, music and poetry evenings in response to COP where lots of people contributed. <laughs> so a whole variety of things kind of bubbled up from our eco champions. Um, so I really want to encourage that. I just need to keep going back to my slide so I can remember what I was going to say. Um, conscious of time, so I'm going to move on to the next thing. What are you doing with your church land? Do you have any around your church that's a really important space um, to consider when you're thinking about integrating creation care how could we start to use our land differently um, could we garden more for wildlife protection could we make it a space that is more welcoming to people to come and sit in and uh, relax in and um, find some space and peace in we have particularly um, used our land at my church for something called the Green Cotton Project, which grew out of somebody being the land champion. So we had land champions for Eco Church and they become so impassioned about working with the land that we wanted to do more with it and make it more of a community resource than it was. And that meant starting to offer a weekly gardening club particularly for mental health support and to promote biodiversity. So we're gardening with a real focus on uh, wildlife, uh, pollinators, good habitats for birds and bees and local wildlife and local planting. Um, 
So we run that every week, two till four on Wednesday afternoons. Um, it's a paid post for the person who runs it. Um, so we're investing in it as a church. Uh, and we're really starting to see some good community be built through this project. Um, crossing over, we're in quite a student area. So students and uh, local residents are working together. Ooh, new kinds of buildings. That's a great big question I'm seeing coming up in the chat. Um, that is an interesting one. I've got some interesting ideas on that. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, so I just encourage you to, to think about the land that you have around your church. We have also now started using it for worship a bit. We don't have very much space, but it's a space now that we take out the early foundations our young people into. Um, it's a space that we sometimes now gather to pray in. And it's all just all about how can we connect ourselves a bit more with the earth. We're so, you know, so the whole point of Hazelnut is connecting us more with the earth. But often in our church buildings, we don't recognise the resource that might be there, even in some smaller areas um, just around our buildings. There's a lot we can do. And I had some lovely pictures to show you, but my... Uh, Obviously, my slideshow is not working, so I can't show you any of that. Let's move on to another resource. So prayer and worship. Prayer and worship is an important part of what we do together, isn't it, in church? And I just wanted to share with you some particularly good resources that I've appreciated. Um, if you're leading the intercessions or if you're leading some group prayers, I want to commend this to you. This is a book by um, Stephen Shakespeare called The Earth Cries Glory, and it runs through the seasons of the year in tandem with the growing year. Um, and it has a lot of beautiful prayers and liturgies that um, you got blessings and offering prayers and for four parts of the day, the awakening, so the morning time, pausing at midday, reflecting on the journey, recalling, so as the day lengthens into shadows, and then an evening blessing. So I'm going to suggest this to you again, this was on my presentation. Um, Earth Cries Glory is a really helpful prayer book for um, anyone wanting to centralise this more. Dave, I'm seeing your question, how do we centralise eco-care and um, creation care into more, more central? Um, I think responding to that it is about eco church is a good place to start because it does look at every aspect of your worshiping life together but i think it's about as i said getting more than just one or two people on board with the eco church pro process it's about, about um, encouraging those people who don't think it's a big deal to get involved in it and a process of um of education and of sharing and catching it um i think Part of it is caught, not taught. So it is maybe taking, encouraging people to come to um, things like protests or groups that are reading groups, looking at things like, you know, Laudato Si, things like that, that we've just completed a reading group on Laudato Si, which was a very feisty and interesting space, um, brought up a lot of things. Um, but I do think it, centralising it is a huge theological shift I think for a lot of churches um, seeing it as a side part of kind of our discipleship versus one of the central central core parts of our vocation as humans is to care for the earth to till and to keep and we've kind of forgotten it and I think part of the church's job is to retell that story of what we are for and who we are um, that we're not human consumers that we're human beings and so I think that needs to come in through the preaching, through the teaching, through the worship, as well as the action. It answers that slightly. Um, keeping on the, the prayer and worship, there's another great book I'd recommend called Landscape Liturgies. This is another book um, with lots of excellent prayers, reading suggestions throughout the year and for lots of different um, for lots of different occasions. So there's some really great liturgies out there, but I'm just showing you a couple of my particular favourites. I'll go on to some book recommendations in a minute. 
we do have the season of creation tide coming up in the um in the church year at least in the church of england september the 1st to october the 4th and if you go on the church of england website um, there are loads of really helpful resources into what you might do in church it's a great opportunity to um to focus church life around these issues we're going into the harvest season but it's a great opportunity to talk more widely about it so do make use of that in your planning um, for what's coming up perhaps think about um you know rogation tide prayers seed blessing prayers through the year things that connect you more with the earth if you're an urban church um, if you're a rural church you may already be quite familiar with those things but i think they're a resource for the body um, of Christ that we can all get on board with and help us remember the rhythms of the year and pray in a way that resonates with that. Another thing we have done um, and has been a Eucharist. So if you are in a sacramental tradition um, or even if you're not and you don't often get to do communion together to have an eco-focused uh, communion can be a really powerful way to engage the whole church. I put together a liturgy for that and if you're interested in um, a liturgy for that then do kind of get in touch and I will share that with you but uh, as part of that we kind of confess our ecological sins um, and you know if you can have your hands in the earth and connect with the earth as you do that that's an incredibly powerful um, way to um, confess that we are part you know we're a big part of that problem but we're also part of the solution and part of the eco Eucharist is to bring plants to the Eucharistic table, to the table to be blessed um, along with the bread and the wine. And then we go out and we plant those plants at the end of the service as an act of hope, an act of recreation and new creation. So it's about thinking about how we can use the things that we normally do and how can we restate what we are for. How can we retell that story that we are to care for creation in all we do as church together? I did have a lovely video to play you because I wanted to talk about art and music. I'm just going to put it in the, see if I can put it in the chat and you can look it up later. Um, uh, I'm going to murder the spelling. Um, look up Elegy for the Arctic on YouTube. I'll try and put the link in a bit later. Um, just the importance of using a variety of things in the way that we do prayer and worship and how powerful music can be. This is a beautiful piece of piano music that he actually plays right next to um, a, an iceberg as it carves. It's very powerful. You know, it was written for Greenpeace. But um, as you see the iceberg kind of collapse and carve behind him as he's playing this piece of music, it's a very visceral kind of encounter, which is really helpful for, some, for people to, um, to help our prayer, to help our connection with the issues. So do be kind of creative in that. Um, art can also be a route in for lots of people. Hazelnut has got a travelling art fair that goes around to lots of different churches, helping churches engage with um, creation through art, through kind of pro provocative stuff and encouraging stuff. Um, so those are also good resources. Now I want to share with you books. because We haven't got much time, left, so I'll just do a show and tell of some helpful books. I've talked about La Dati Si. I think this would be my core text for any church looking to get on board with um, creation care. And as I say, just done a book group on it and that was a really rich time. You could do a six week book group. There's tons of resources online for um, running book groups on Ladder to See. And it's a really good route in looking at the problem from the beginning, looking at what humanity is for, looking at where we've gone wrong, looking at the systemic issues, looking at what we might do about it together and where the hope is. So I really commend that to you. And for a deeper meditation on that, I want to also hugely recommend This Sacred Life by Norman Wurzba. It's kind of going in the same direction as Laudato Si, but it's a deeper, wider, broader, more philosophical kind of meditation on it. And it's a huge, hugely helpful and inspiring book. So I really 
uh, recommend that to you. Is there a C of E equivalent to LAD RTC? I'm not sure there is. Um, if anyone knows of one, do put it in the do put it in that. But I um, hopefully reading from the paper isn't too much of a problem for people theologically. Um, I think it's about taking um, it's about listening to the heart behind it. I know that we can have lots of issues with difference in theology, but I think Pope Francis, it, this is a letter to the world. Um, and I think it's the one that bears reading. Um, the other one I'd recommend is This World Ending Fire by Wendell Berry. The words of Wendell Berry are very good and um, he's a great and inspiring writer on these things. And these are a collection of shorter essays, which again can be quite helpful in a church context just to offer a shorter piece. And the poetry of Mary Oliver, I also commend that to you for use in worship, for use in church. She is a poet with such a deep love and appreciation for nature. Um, and again, this was all in my lovely presentation that you're not seeing right now. So now um, I think I'll just throw it open to questions for our remaining four minutes. Dave is liking reading World End in Fire. Yes, it is pretty awesome, isn't it? Um, I'm just reading the essay damage in it, it's very moving. Love Mary Oliver, yes. Her poetry is great. It's been a bit of a whistle stop tour of various things I've found helpful. Um, I hope you found it somewhat helpful. Um, do share any things in the chat that you're finding help centralize creation care into your church life. Justin, did you have a question higher up? Yeah, I just wanted to hear you talk Is about- Is it possible for large buildings? I think it's a really tricky one on um, old stone buildings. I mean, one of the most convincing things I've seen is where you build a greenhouse outside of it. And um, that actually then totally changes the heating situation for the building but I'm not sure how practical that is um yeah I just wonder because a lot of my clergy friends say they spent a huge part of their budget heating the church yeah uh, and um I was doing some research to find out how they dealt with that in the middle ages and the answer is uh they did not heat the church so <laughs> they did not we did not heat our church last winter because of a broken boiler um and everybody kind of learnt to bring blankets and hot water bottles. And it's not ideal. It's not warm and welcoming. And I think as churches, we need to think about it, especially as we go into a season of fuel poverty. And people may need warm buildings and it may be part of our mission. And our love for the community that we could offer buildings that are warm in the week and people can come and sit in them. I think we need to think about that going forward. But I know that's not a long term um, solution to the problem of our buildings. Um, I don't have a brilliant answer on that. <laughs> it's a it's a real challenge. It's part of why we've struggled to move from bronze to silver. Eco Church Award has been we're gold on pretty much everything else, but our building, there's things we just can't change. Um, Is there an alternative to oil heating. So I think we do need some creative thinking around it. We've just been Say again, asked sorry. Is there an alternative? I'm in a rural area where we've got a very old parish church with oil heating, which is something obviously from a cost point of view. But we have we have got a smaller church hall and just today we've been asked whether we'd use that because they're thinking about fuel poverty as a venue, which is probably viable. Yeah. But in terms of replacing oil, what is there on offer that is going to be cheaper? <laughs> well, ground heat source stuff, I think, is is supposed to be pretty good. But I have to say I'm not an expert on this stuff. Um, dioceses are doing quite a lot of thinking about helping churches get to net zero. And right. the, you're, you know, you're, if you're in a uh, Church of England diocese, there should be some like, decent advice. But I think ground heat, yeah, ground heat source pumps are supposed to be a, a good way forward. I thought you, but you need to... big radiators at. Uh, and I thought you needed a well insulated building, which I'm sure ours isn't. <laughs> no, and they're very hard to insulate because you can't insulate the ceilings very well. Um, yes, I'm afraid we've run out of time, everybody. But Arosha is a great resource for building stuff, as is the um, Centre for Alternative Technology in North Wales. Check yeah. them out. They're writing a lot of good stuff on this. 
Um, thank you everybody for being here. Um, it's been great to be with you. Sorry the presentation didn't work. Hope you've been able to make a note of some of the resources I shared. You can stop the recording.